Hey TV fans, let's delve into a classic series from the past. Do you remember stumbling upon it for the first time? Whether it was ages ago or just recently, there's something captivating about its simple yet effective approach to solving crimes. Now here's what's up this series is full of interesting, surprising, and even touching details. So keep your eyes on the screen because we're in for a whirlwind of emotions. Have you ever wondered about lesser known facts or juicy stories related to it? Well, you're in luck. There's a treasure trove of fascinating tidbits waiting to be discovered. But before we spill everything, we want to hear from you. What's your favorite memory or personal experience connected to it? Share your stories and anecdotes in the comments below. We can't wait to hear about your journey with the show. So get ready for a journey through the world of this classic series. And remember, your stories make this trip even more special. Share away and let the nostalgia flow. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, a TV show hit the screens, captivating audiences with its gripping portrayal of police work in Los Angeles. Starring Jack Webb as a dedicated officer named Sergeant Friday, the series delved into the city's gritty streets, tackling tough issues like race relations and drug abuse. Joined by his partner Bill Gannon, played by Harry Morgan, the duo faced the challenges of law enforcement head-on, navigating through a turbulent social climate. While some episodes lean towards exaggerated drama, the show stayed true to depicting police procedures and the dedication of officers like Sergeant Friday. Despite its cancellation after three seasons, the show's exploration of societal issues through the lens of law enforcement continues to resonate with viewers and scholars alike. It remains a reminder of the power of television to shed light on real-world complexities. Amidst the rise in teenage drug use, a familiar face emerged on television screens in 1966, aiming to tackle the issue head-on. This individual, recognized for his role as Sergeant Joe Friday, took charge of revitalizing a show to address the prevalent problem. Utilizing an innovative approach to gather content, rewards were offered to police officers for submitting real-life stories, which eventually became plots for episodes. This not only encouraged active engagement from law enforcement, but also infused authenticity into the series' narrative. The portrayal of Sergeant Joe Friday by this individual stands out as a significant aspect of the show's legacy. Through his commitment to addressing societal issues and his inventive method of involving officers in crafting episode plots, the TV show left a lasting impression. Its impact resonates even today, demonstrating the power of television in addressing real-world challenges. In every episode, the person who created the series left a small sign. He used his hands to show a hammer dropping in the beginning. When one of the actors got sick, they worked it into the story of an episode. They showed how flexible they could be in making the show. Two actors appeared in 13 episodes, each in different roles, not as police officers. Two other actors appeared the most as police officers, playing different ranks. They added depth and variety to the group of actors in the show, making it more interesting. In Dragnet 1967, the length of an episode was often signaled by the opening monologue. If the episode was short, Joe Friday's introduction would include a tourist-like description of Los Angeles. For longer episodes, the monologue was more straightforward, focusing on his badge and work in the city. Joe Friday and Bill Gannon maintained continuity by always wearing the same outfits. However, a scene once saw Harry Morgan wearing Friday's coat, unnoticed until after filming. Jack Webb, protective of the Dragnet theme, initially refused permission for a parody by Stan Freeberg. After hearing the parody, Webb gave his approval, impressed by Freeberg's creativity. Harry Morgan reprised his role as Officer Bill Gannon in multiple iterations of the series, and even appeared in the Simpsons episode Mother Simpson. Friday and Gannon's habitual yes, ma'am response became a humorous recurring motif. Friday's badge number, 714, cleverly reflected the area code for Orange County, where Sergeant Dan Cook, the technical advisor, arranged for it to be issued. The retired badge is now exhibited at the LAPD Academy's museum. CII Friday and Gannon cruised the streets in the 1967 Ford Fairlane Ford Doctor. So then, Jack Webb, the show's creator, let Harry Morgan add his own funny touch to the role when they worked together. Webb hoped to bring a new vibe to the series in 1982, thinking of Kent McCord as Friday's new partner. Unfortunately, Morgan couldn't join due to previous commitments, and the reboot idea fell through. Despite this setback, Webb stayed optimistic about refreshing the show. Sadly, he passed away suddenly in December 1982, putting an end to any future plans and leaving fans mourning the loss of a great storyteller. Dragnet 1967 lives on as a reminder of Webb's innovative vision and the lasting appeal of its timeless themes. 
Jack Webb, and Harry Morgan sported identical suits throughout the show's duration. Webb, known for his role as Joe Friday, had a significant real-life connection to the crime world. He was involved in investigating the notorious Black Dahlia murder case in Los Angeles during the 1940s. The case involving the gruesome murder and dismemberment of an aspiring actress left a lasting impact on him and served as inspiration for the creation of the show. This real-life experience likely contributed to the authenticity and grittiness of the stories portrayed in Dragnet 1967. Jack Webb always kept a serious tone throughout the show. He played Sergeant Friday and drove a 1964 Ford Fairlane as his own car. When the story involved drugs and young people, the background music would usually have sitter sounds. This mix of realistic storytelling and mood-setting music captured viewers' attention, immersing them in the world of L.A. law enforcement. Jack Webb's portrayal of Sergeant Friday became famous and has influenced how many sea detectives today. Dragnet 1967 stays memorable as a result of Webb's skill in bringing crime stories to TV, making a lasting impression on television history. Sergeant Friday, the main character, was depicted as a smoker throughout the series. He often could be seen with a cigarette in hand, a characteristic that added depth to his persona and reflected the social norms of the time. Barton's, a fictional department store, was frequently mentioned in the show, likely inspired by the real-life Bullocks. It served as a backdrop for various scenes, from casual shopping trips to intense interrogations. The show also featured characters based on real LAPD personnel, such as police artist Hector Garcia and press relations officer Dan Cook, although portrayed by actors. These real-life inspirations added authenticity to the series, grounding it in the reality of the Los Angeles Police Department. Dragnet 1967's attention to detail and commitment to realism made it a standout in the realm of police procedural dramas capturing the imagination of audiences across the nation. In the world of TV, there was a famous car, Unit 1K80, that Gannon and Friday drove. It was as well known as the characters themselves. Harry Morgan, who was supposed to come back as Officer Bill Gannon, couldn't because of his contract. They planned to introduce a new partner for Friday, considering Kent McCord for the role. But then, Jack Webb, who created the show, passed away suddenly. This changed their plans. The famous line, Just the Facts, ma'am, wasn't said by Jack Webb, but became famous thanks to a radio parody by Stan Freeberg. Harry Morgan is best remembered for his roles as Officer Bill Gannon on Dragnet 1967 and as Colonel Later Surgeon Dr. Sherman T. Potter on MASH. When the original show ended, Joe Friday had been promoted to lieutenant. However, Jack Webb decided to make Friday a sergeant again for the new series because few people remember that Friday was promoted toward the end of our run. We think it's better to have him a sergeant again. Few detective lieutenants get out into the field. The Management Services Division handles the finances, training, and information services for the police department. In a popular TV show, Harry Morgan played a character with the same name as his real-life wife Eileen. He acted so well that people really connected with his character. Clark Howitt, another actor in the series, showed his talent by playing many different roles in 21 episodes. He was very versatile, playing 17 different characters like captains, lieutenants, and an inspector. Virginia Gray, who voiced the mother character in a scary movie called Psycho, also acted in other movies like The Pyramid Swindle. She was in Psycho Roman 2 and Psycho 3 as well, showing her skills in suspense and horror films. These actors made a big impact in entertainment each bringing their own special talents. In the realm of classic TV series, one individual stands out with an impressive record in 11 different shows. A police officer named Martin, played by Kent McCord, made his mark in the big explosion back in 1967. Later, he shared the screen with Martin Milner in Adam 12. The small screen of that era was a riot of colors, with hues like harvest gold, cornflower blue, and avocado green dominating the scene. These vibrant shades were more than just decorative, they were a visual language, conveying mood, tone, and cultural references in each episode. The use of such vivid colors wasn't just a whim, but a reflection of the prevailing trends and tastes. In the midst of this technicolor spectacle, the color orange took center stage in almost every episode. It became a subtle yet powerful element, enhancing the overall viewing experience for audiences. The creators and artists behind shows like Dragnet 1967 invested great effort in meticulous set design and aesthetics, leaving an enduring legacy. These shows didn't just entertain, they visually captivated, becoming emblematic of an era. The attention to detail, reflected in the careful choice of colors, was a collaborative effort that showcased dedication and vision. 
has shaped the medium of television influencing generations to come. The use of orange, particularly in Dragnet 1967 and similar shows, serves as a vivid reminder of the creativity and innovation of that period. It wasn't just a color, it was a language that spoke volumes about the artistry behind the scenes. Crafting stories on the screen involved a collective effort that left an impression on the TV landscape. The artists and creators of this era demonstrated their craft, leaving a lasting impact on viewers. And so, the narrative of color in Dragnet 1967 and its contemporaries remains a vivid reminder of that creative era. During the planning stages of the revival, Jack Webb intended to bring in his former co-star Ben Alexander to reprise his role. However, Alexander was committed to another series, The Felony Squad. Consequently, Webb chose Harry Morgan to reprise his role as Officer Bill Gannon. Episodes from this series served as training tools for the real-life LAPD. The iconic hands hammering Roman 7, seen in the credits, are attributed to Webb and Harold C. Nyby, Webb's contractor. In the series, Mary Anders, despite being naturally blonde, wore a brunette wig at Jack Webb's insistence, enhancing her serious appearance. The LAPD satisfaction with the show led to them honoring Webb with a detective's badge and naming buildings after him. Art Gilmore's versatile talent saw him guest starring in 14 episodes, portraying various high-ranking officers. The Webb building was demolished in 2015 during the Academy's renovation, marking the end of an era. Jack Webb, known for his role as Sergeant Joe Friday, was honored with a commemorative postage stamp in 29 as part of the early TV memory series. Despite high ratings, his second series was canceled after four seasons due to his plans to focus on producing other successful shows. Harry Morgan, who starred alongside Webb, later collaborated with him on additional projects. In the series, Bill Gannon was portrayed as a family man with four children, while Joe Friday remained a confirmed bachelor. Webb employed this contrast to add variety to the dialogue and character dynamics, a technique he also used in his later series. The department radio license number for this TV series is KMA 367, while Friday and Gannon's car bears the license number JHA 867. Contrary to common belief, Jack Webb's character, Joe Friday, never uttered the famous line, just the facts, ma'am, in any episode. The accurate phrase used was, all we want are the facts, ma'am. Throughout its run, the title of the series would change to reflect the corresponding broadcast year. During the episodes, the department's radio license is identified as KMA 367, and the car driven by Friday, and Gannon is labeled with the license number JHA 867. It's worth noting that Jack Webb, playing Joe Friday, did not say just the facts, ma'am, as commonly believed. The precise line used was all we want are the facts, ma'am. Additionally, the show underwent title changes to align with the respective broadcast years. In summary, KMA 367 is the department radio license, JHA 867 is Friday, and Gannon's car license, and the often misquoted line is all we want are the facts, ma'am. The series adapted its title to match the broadcast year. In a series beloved by many, Kent McCord played Officer Jim Reed in four different versions. His portrayal brought a special charm and realness to the character that fans really connected with. In the third season, episodes got even more realistic with titles mentioning department and report numbers. Jack Webb, as Sergeant Friday, always set the scene at the beginning of each episode with the date, time, weather, and division. These little details made viewers feel like they were right there with the officers living out their daily routines. The show's commitment to showing police work accurately made it really popular and influential in the crime drama world. Kent McCord's role as Officer Jim Reed is unforgettable, making him a key part of TV history. Even now, Dragnet 1967 still draws people in with its gripping stories and memorable characters. It's classic TV at its finest. Despite initial tensions with Jack Jones over an article, Jack Webb graciously paid for Barbara Stewart's wedding after learning of her military performances in Europe. Harry Morgan portrayed off. Bill Gannon across various renditions of the series, including its 1987 revival and a cameo on The Simpsons. Virginia Gregg, highly esteemed by Webb, featured prominently in supporting roles across the radio, television, and film adaptations of the police drama. Webb's appreciation for Gregg's talent solidified her status as a frequent collaborator. In the show, Jack Webb allowed Harry Morgan to showcase his humor. Apparently, Webb was concerned about new viewers catching the series midway, hence he reiterated the setting and introduced his character in every episode. Surprisingly, the intro music was played live by an orchestra each week, causing an odd interruption when there was once a musician strike. 
Morgan, who played an LAPD detective named Webb in a later episode, previously starred as an LAPD member in the show. It was created by and co-star Jack Webb. In the series, Harry Morgan stepped in as Officer Bill Gannon, replacing the initial choice with the assistance of his close friend Jack Webb. Webb, drawing from his past roles, directly borrowed the iconic opening lines from the 1948 film noir He Walked by Night, where he portrayed a crime scene investigator lab technician. Virginia Gregg, known for her versatility, appeared frequently on various radio shows including Dragnet, Nightbeat, and The Lone Ranger, embodying a wide array of female characters akin to radio greats like William Conrad and Ben Wright. Her adaptability made her a prominent figure in the radio industry. During its peak, many people were so captivated by the show that they would call the LAPD, hoping to speak with the main character. The police had to come up with a standard reply for these calls, explaining that the character was off-duty. A notable detail about the main character was his wardrobe choice. When he took off his jacket, he wore a see-through white shirt without an undershirt, which was quite unusual. Another interesting aspect of the show is that a real-life police officer occasionally served as an advisor and even inspired a character's name. This connection to real-life police work adds an extra layer of intrigue to the show's history. As for its influence on other famous works, it's fascinating to note that the name of a character in the show was later used by Gene Roddenberry in Star Trek for the adversaries the Klingons. These behind-the-scenes insights provide a deeper understanding of the show's significance and its connections to both popular culture and law enforcement. In the wake of Jack Webb's passing, the Los Angeles Police Department retired badge number 714, which was famously worn by his character Joe Friday in the show. This badge originally belonged to Lieutenant Dan Cook, a close friend of Webb. Lieutenant Cook, who was highly respected within the LAPD, gave the badge to Webb for his portrayal of Joe Friday, highlighting their real-life friendship. In the series, they often mentioned the business and professional code as B&P, reflecting real legal procedures. This attention to detail made the show feel authentic, connecting with audiences and law enforcement professionals. Webb's commitment to accuracy not only shaped Joe Friday's character, but also made the series very popular. So, badge number 714 became more than just a prop. It represented the link between fiction and reality, honoring both the character and the man behind him. Through his role as Joe Friday, Webb left a lasting impression on TV history, influencing many viewers and actors. His impact reminds us of the power of storytelling and the importance of a single character. In a tragic turn, one of the actors from Dragnet 1967, Harry Morgan, who portrayed Officer Bill Gannon, faced a devastating loss during the series. His son, Charlie, was diagnosed with cancer during the show's run and tragically passed away during the filming of an episode. This heartbreaking event cast a shadow over the production, affecting the entire cast and crew. Despite his grief, Harry Morgan continued to deliver his performances with professionalism and dedication. During its run, Dragnet 1967 faced a tragic event when one of its main actors, Martin Milner, lost his daughter Amy to leukemia. The devastating loss deeply affected him, his family, and the cast and crew of the show. Despite his grief, Milner continued to work on the series, demonstrating his professionalism and dedication to his craft. This heartbreaking event serves as a poignant reminder of the personal struggles that often accompany the demanding world of television production. One somber note from the series is the tragic death of Kent McCord's character, Officer Jim Reed, in the line of duty. This event left fans mourning the loss of a beloved character and highlighted the risks faced by law enforcement officers daily. Despite being a fictional character, Reed's demise served as a poignant reminder of the dangers inherent in police work. Amidst the production of a beloved TV show from the late 60s, a sudden tragedy struck when one of the lead actors unexpectedly passed away. The loss deeply affected everyone involved, casting a shadow over the set and altering the show's atmosphere. Despite this heartbreaking setback, the team banded together, channeling their grief into a renewed dedication to their work. In its portrayal of police work, the show set a standard for future crime dramas, captivating audiences with its realistic approach and attention to detail. Its straightforward narrative style and authentic depiction of law enforcement procedures made it a timeless favorite among viewers and a subject of praise from critics. The show's impact on television history remains undeniable, leaving an indelible mark on the medium. It continues to be remembered fondly by fans for its memorable characters and gripping storylines, serving as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of tragedy. 
In the annals of television history, few shows have left as lasting an impression as the one we're discussing. A tragic incident occurred during filming, where a prop gun malfunctioned, leading to the accidental death of a crew member. Despite efforts to enhance safety measures, the unforeseen event cast a somber shadow over the production. Throughout its run, this show tackled various social issues with a gritty realism rarely seen on television at the time. Whether addressing drug abuse, juvenile delinquency, or domestic violence, it didn't shy away from confronting uncomfortable truths. The lead actor not only starred as the main character, but also served as the series creator and executive producer. His dedication to authenticity, evidenced by the use of real police jargon and procedures, contributed significantly. His portrayal of the main character as a no-nonsense detective with a dedication to justice resonated with audiences, making him an unforgettable figure in television history. His stoic demeanor and unwavering commitment to upholding the law became synonymous with the character he portrayed. Despite its serious tone, the show occasionally injected moments of humor, often through the interactions between the main character and his various partners. These lighter moments provided a welcome respite from the intense subject matter tackled in each episode. Over its several seasons, the show left a strong impression on television, setting a standard for police procedurals that would influence countless shows to come. Its significance as a groundbreaking series that fearlessly addressed societal issues continues to strike a chord with audiences today. Amidst the successes of a beloved TV series from the late 1960s, there was a sorrowful undertone. Tragedy struck during filming when one of the recurring actors unexpectedly passed away. This loss deeply affected everyone involved, leading to the reshooting of scenes and a reevaluation of the storyline. Despite the emotional and logistical challenges, the team behind the production showed remarkable resilience and dedication, ensuring that the show continued on. The memory of the departed actor remains a significant part of the show's history, reminding us of the unpredictable nature of life behind the scenes. Despite the hardships faced, the show persisted, a testament to the strength of the human spirit. In the end, the legacy of those involved lives on through the enduring episodes that continue to captivate audiences. In the world of television, unforeseen events can profoundly affect both the narrative and the lives of those involved. Recently, a sad incident occurred during the production of a beloved show, leading to a significant loss within the cast. This unexpected turn of events deeply impacted the atmosphere on set and the direction of the production moving forward. The loss of a key member of the cast was felt not only within the storyline, but also among the crew and fans. As news of the tragedy spread, a somber mood settled over the community connected to the show. However, amidst the grief, there was a collective effort to honor the memory of the departed individual. The camaraderie among the cast members was put to the test as they navigated the challenges posed by the loss. Despite the difficult circumstances, the team rallied together to pay homage to their colleague, both on and off screen. A special tribute episode was crafted to commemorate the life and contributions of the departed cast member, allowing viewers to remember and celebrate their legacy. In the face of adversity, the resilience of the creative community behind the show shone through. Despite the profound impact of the loss, the production persevered, demonstrating the enduring spirit of storytelling and the power of collaboration. The legacy of the departed cast member continued to resonate throughout the subsequent seasons, serving as a reminder of the fleeting nature of life. Ultimately, the show remained a testament to the strength of the human spirit and the ability to overcome challenges even in the realm of television production. The narrative that unfolded behind the scenes serves as a poignant reminder of the profound impact one individual can have on a collective artistic endeavor, leaving a lasting impression on the hearts and minds of all involved. Even when things were tough, Jack Webb, who made the show we're talking about, kept going. He really cared about making it good for people watching at home. His dedication, even when things were hard, shows how much he loved what he did. He just wanted to make sure people enjoyed watching. Even when things got really hard for him, he never gave up. He had a clear idea of what he wanted the show to be like, and he worked really hard to make it happen. Because of how much he cared and how hard he worked, Jack Webb made a big mark on TV history. His story still inspires people today, reminding them that sticking to what you love can make a real difference. Behind the scenes of a well-known show from the late 1960s, there was a tough moment for one of the actors. Martin Milner, who played a role in the series, went through a very sad time. His daughter, Amy, got very sick and passed away while the show was being made. Even though he was heartbroken, Milner kept working on the show. 
His determination to keep going despite his pain shows how strong he was. It's a reminder of how people can keep going even when things are really hard. During filming, Jack Webb, the creator of the series, insisted on keeping details authentic. This commitment extended to filming on location at actual Los Angeles Police Department precincts and using real police officers as extras. The authenticity added depth to the show's portrayal of law enforcement procedures and environments, enhancing its realism for viewers. This dedication to authenticity was a key factor in the show's success, contributing to its lasting impact on television police dramas. In the making of Dragnet 1967, something very sad happened. One of the actors who had been on the show for a long time suddenly passed away. This was really shocking for everyone involved in making the show. He had been a big part of why the show was so good. His talent and presence made every scene better. When he was gone, it felt like something important was missing from the show. But the cast and crew stuck together. They remembered him and the good times they had shared. Even though it was hard, they kept going. As they kept filming, they made sure to remember him in special ways. They gave his character a good send-off in the show, so viewers could say goodbye to him. It was sad, but it was also a way to honor him. Even though he wasn't there anymore, his spirit was still felt on set. His work on the show would always be remembered. It was like he left a part of himself behind in every episode. So, even though he was gone, his work lived on. He made a big impact, and that wouldn't be forgotten. In the making of Dragnet 1967, something really sad happened. One of the main actors, Harry Morgan, unexpectedly died. He played Officer Bill Gannon and was loved by everyone. His death left a big hole in the show and in the hearts of those who knew him. The cast and crew felt his absence strongly. Despite the sadness, they kept making the show, but it wasn't the same without him. They all worked together to honor his memory, but it was tough. Harry Morgan may be gone, but he'll always be remembered in the show and by those who worked with him. In one particularly tragic turn of events, an episode of the series featured a storyline eerily similar to real-life events. A young boy, inspired by an episode of Dragnet 1967, accidentally shot and killed his friend while playing with a gun he thought was unloaded, mirroring an episode where a similar incident occurs. This heartbreaking incident highlighted the power and responsibility of media in influencing behavior and served as a stark reminder of the consequences of mishandling firearms.